Hi everybody and welcome. So today I'm going to be showcasing my latest project which is a new version of Terrain Finder. So first off I'm going to talk a little bit about what this does and how to use it. Um, so yeah this project is created in order to search for naturally generated uh, patterns of terrain in the Minecraft overworld. Um, so in theory you could use uh, a screenshot or a video of terrain that has been naturally generated that you've seen from someone and use it to find where a person is in the Minecraft world, what their coordinates are, or what the coordinates of their base are. And yeah, this is generally interesting on SMP servers or anar anarchy servers, uh, such as 2B2T, uh, where people will like often try and hide their bases. Um, but yeah, due to this new optimized program, uh, it's like pretty feasible to find bases that are even like very far from zero zero. And yeah, I had an old implementation of this project that I created about two years ago or so. Um, but it had a few faults and I coded up this uh, brand new version in C++ that has a lot of the requested improvements that I got. Um, so yeah, let's get into this. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use it. Um, so first off, uh, there's a few things that you'll need to input in order to search for the pattern of terrain. Uh, first off is the version. Uh, this program supports 1.12 to 1.16 uh, overworld terrain. So you could select whatever you want. In this example, I'm going to be using 1.12. Uh, next, of course, you need the world seed. Uh, in this example, I'm going to be using the 2B2T world seed uh, for my pattern that I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, next, we have the coordinate boundaries. So um, it's pretty infeasible to like try and search the entire Minecraft world considering it's like 60 million by 60 million. So if you have some general range of where uh, what you're trying to search for is in, then the search will take much less time. Uh, the search basically does a brute force. Um, so it has to do like the same code that generates all of the chunks in Minecraft. So if you are searching a very large area, it's going to be taking like a much longer time overall. Uh, yeah, next off, next up we have the thread count. So uh, this is generally based on your CPU uh, hardware, um, like how trying to change this option, how much like this will actually help you. Um, you can just run it on a single thread. Um, in this example, I'm going to be running 12 threads since my CPU is a Ryzen 7 3800X and that's eight cords or 16 threads. So I will actually see a performance improvement for up to 16 threads. Um, but yeah, that's not necessarily the case for you. Uh, next up, we have the max results option. This is not too important, but uh, the search can be terminated early if it hits this number of uh, results. So maybe if you only want one result, you could just set this to one, but I'll just leave it at 512 for now. Uh, yeah, next up we have the formation building. So this is the same, this is done the same exact way as some of my older programs, but I'm going to be going over an example here um, just to try and explain it better, make sure everyone understands how to do it. Um, so I'm going to go into Minecraft here. You see I have this square area uh, created of glass blocks, and this is what I'm going to be inputting into the program uh, to search for. Um, so I have a six by six area here, um, and yeah, I, I recommend trying to do, uh, I guess, a square area as well because it probably simplifies things a little bit more. But yeah, let's get into it. So you want to use your screen, get your screenshot or video, and then decide what the sample of terrain you're going to be inputting into the program is, and then you want to go to the corner of this formation. And this right here, if you if you like stand like this in the bottom left corner where I'm facing, if you look forward, this will be the plus x direction for the relative coordinate inputs that you're inputting into the program is. And if you look to the right, this will be the plus z. And even if that's not necessarily the case, like with the actual coordinates in the Minecraft world, uh, the search in the program will rotate your formation to ensure that it still is able to find it even if um, the plus x and z are like not necessarily correct but yeah so this first block in the corner here 
we are like I'm talking about the sand block underneath here. This is going to be the 0, 0, 0 coordinate relative value. And we and the all the other coordinates are going to be relative to this value, like plus some value. So this is 0, 0, 0. I'm going to input that into the program here. Um, so right now, 0, 0, 0, you see for the relative coordinates, I add this. And this means we've added that first block in the formation. And I'm going to go, I'm going to show some other blocks in the formation as well. So if I move up one here, as I said, this is the plus x direction. And as you could tell, I had to move up one block in order to reach this. So this is up one block from this sand block. So that's plus one y value. And we moved plus one in the x direction. So this is going, if we go back to the program here, the input for this will be 1, 1, 0. The z coordinate is the exact same, as you could tell. Um, so that is the second block. Uh, I'll input a couple more just to show an example, or just to make sure people are understanding this. Um, if I move plus 1 in the z direction here, so x will be 0 still, but z will be 1. And you could tell we didn't go up at all to reach this block. So this will still be y equals 0. I won't input this, but uh, I guess for better example, I'll show this block. So we need to, if we want to input this block, we see that that's plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So plus 5 in the z direction and minus 1 in the y direction. And the x coordinate is still 0. So if we go back to the, the program here, that will be 0, negative 1, 5. So if I click Show, you can see we have these three blocks in the formation now. So if we started a search, it would look for um, patterns in the terrain in the world uh, where this exists. So if we search, you could see it finds a ton of results because that's not a very unique formation, and it only has three blocks. It immediately reaches this max results count. But in order to distinguish the search more, we have to input all the rest of these blocks in the world. So I'll do one more block, for example, so people can understand it. So let's say we wanted to input this block. So that's plus 1, 2, 3 in the z direction, plus 1 in the x direction. And as you could tell, that's too higher in the y direction than that uh, base uh, block that we inputted there. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3 in the z, plus 1x, plus 2y. So x3, y2, x1, which, yeah, I didn't change the window, but you can see that here now. 1, 2, and 3. And then we add that. And then we have that block in the formation, and it's it's correct then. So I'm not going to input this whole formation on the video because that would take too long. But I will use um, this other feature that I added that allows you to load and save uh, block formations from a file. So I already have an example here called in in the file desertx.txt. So if I load this and then show, you could see I have the formation already created. It was in that file. If you create a formation in the program and you want to save it, you just press save and then it'll save all the blocks to the file. This should like easily, if you want to close and restart the program, you could save the formation. Um, I should mention that that doesn't save like the biomes that you input or any of these other uh, parameters, but only these blocks in the formation because that's kind of like the tedious part. So now, in the program here, we have the entire formation, as you can see, right here. And next up, I'm going to be talking about the biome filtering. So I should mention that this is optional. You don't have to do biome filtering in order for things to work, but it can improve the performance of your search uh, pretty dramatically. So the point of this is like why we would want to input the biomes that our formation is in is because the code to 
to generate what biomes are in a chunk or in the world at a certain location is much uh, less performance intensive. It takes much less CPU power to figure this out. And if we do the biome generation and see that, okay, well, our formation isn't in this biome, then the program doesn't need to do the generation for the terrain in that chunk because since it already knows it can't be in there. So the program will be able to search much faster as it doesn't have to do this generation part, which takes most of the time, um, if we are able to filter it out using the biomes. So here you basically have a list as well, similar, similar to the formation list. Uh, you have to put the, you have to input the biome IDs. And so in my example here, let's take a look. So obviously this is desert here, desert here. Well, this is actually desert hills but we have desert right next to it. And we also have a river biome over here. And for the formation, you want to input all of the coordinates that are slightly close to it. So like, let's say within 30 blocks or so, just to be safe, uh, since the filtering is done like per chunk level in the program. So you want to make sure you have all the chunks that could potentially be um, nearby it. So for my example, I'm going to be inputting desert, desert hills, as well as river biomes. And you, to do this, you have to use the biome IDs, which I'll have a link in the description to the Minecraft wiki for the biome IDs. And these are just uh, number values uh, for each biome in the world. And yeah, so I have them listed right here. Uh, the biomes are two. Biome ID two is desert. 7, 7 is river, and then desert hills is 17. So we have all three biomes, as you can see here. So that is that. And finally, we are ready to perform the search. So I could just start it up here. As you can see, it's moving pretty fast. Um, I guess considering it's a 20K by 20K area. So like in only this brief period of time, we've already found it here. Um, we've already we've been able to search this 20, 20K by 20K area and only that brief period, probably under 30 seconds or so. So that is part of the, due to the major performance optimizations that were made for this, um, compared to the last version, like also due to the threading and the C++ implement implementation, which is much faster. Um, but yeah, that's about it for how to use it. Um, I guess in turn, like, one of the major differences between this and the last version is not having the block type IDs. So, and this is due to using what I'm calling like a height map search as opposed to um, literal terrain searching per block. So in this program, we only differentiate between uh, air blocks and the top terrain block in the world. So like in my program, I just generate the top, whatever the top block is and compare it to that and that is makes for a slight optimization as well, but it also primarily just helps simplify things. Uh, so it should be easier to use, in my opinion. You don't have to like keep track of these block IDs. Um, but yeah, that's about it for how to use this program and most of the major details you need to understand for it. Um, yeah, uh, this program like was a pretty ended up being a pretty big effort. Um, I ended up creating uh, enti an entirely new C++ library uh, for terrain generation as well as uh, terrain searching from scratch uh, in C++, which was not an easy task. Um, I probably ended up spending on this project uh, in total over like 100 hours in coding, like debugging and testing. So yeah, I would really appreciate it if you guys would be willing to uh, subscribe to my channel. I'll probably be coming out with similar projects to this in the future as well. And yeah, if you're able to use this to search and like find someone or f find an area or base and you appreciate it, um, uh, I'd really appreciate like any donations. It really kind of helps justify the big time investment and effort that I put into these kinds of things. So yeah, I have my wallets down here. If you guys um, are willing to donate, I would really appreciate it. Thanks. Um, yeah, uh, I guess another thing I wanted to discuss, I have the implementation of this library available on my GitHub page. 
um, it's pretty much uh, completely uh, uh, working and operational for overworld generation for these new versions. Um, but uh, it's not fully complete, or at least I'd like to implement some more, and then that would allow me to like you know include it in the, the GUI application as well. Um, this doesn't support like nether generation or end generation, which I'd still like at some point. Um, it also doesn't have a GPU search since that's like pretty non-trivial to implement. Um, implement this search on a GPU, it still would definitely be much faster than on a CPU just due to like the parallelization, um, like a similar increase in speed as we saw or as I saw like in my in implementation of my Bedrock Formation Finder. Um, we'd probably be able to see here as well, but uh, it's just not very easy to implement. Um, this also doesn't support like older versions, uh, which might be necessary. Like if the terrain you want to search in is was generated in a much older version, um, for example, like I know on the 2B2T uh, server, like the the server is pretty old, so like some of the terrain that you would want to search for was probably generated in a pretty old version that this doesn't support. So yeah, what I'm saying, I guess, is that I'd really appreciate it if some other people would be willing to like make co contributions on GitHub. Uh, we could really like get a fully fledged library working for this, um, as well as just like optimizations would be nice in general to make things faster. Like this is already pretty fast or much faster uh, than my old implementation, but could always use improvements for sure. Um, so yeah, I'd really appreciate any contributions. Um, like I guess one other cool thing would be if there is any way we could avoid brute forcing for um, doing this terrain pattern matching. Uh, yeah, for like other aspects of uh, RNG cracking in Minecraft, people have been able to like do efficient solutions um, to be able to find like different patterns and stuff. I know for seed finding that's been used, um, but yeah, I looked into this a little bit to see if there's like any possible way um, we could figure out like an efficient solution for this. I wasn't able to find anything. Um, I think like if it is possible, it might be pretty difficult, but I guess I'm not totally ruling it out. If anyone would be willing or able to like try and find an efficient solution, that would be really nice as well. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to contribute, that's another uh, good thing as well. Yeah, in the so that's about it. Uh, in the description, I'll have a download for Windows for the program. It, I still haven't made it for other pro, for other platforms yet, but I'll probably try and build it for like Linux and Mac as well. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you guys later. Bye.